On Wednesday, May 13, hundreds of nurses, doctors, and healthcare reform activists gathered on Capitol Hill to rally in support of the single-payer health plan, also known as John Conyers House Resolution 676. We want to tell our elected officials and we want to tell President Obama that as registered nurses, as frontline registered nurses, we need to be included in the debate. This issue is so important to me that I closed my office to come down to support uh, the nurses and to be part of the Physicians for National Health Care. I'm just tired of the insurance companies dictating what we physicians have to do. The people who are having input now are the pharmaceutical companies, the hospital industry, and the health care industry, the insurance companies, and the people who are advocating for government-run health care system like most other industrialized countries have, you know, in Europe and Canada and everywhere else in the world, that isn't on the table. So what we're supporting really is a government-run health care system, much like Medicare, which is what you get in this country now when you retire and you're over 65 years of age. At the age of 22, I was diagnosed with cervical cancer. My doctor rushed me into surgery. Weeks later, I got a denial letter from Blue Cross Blue Shield. They said the type of surgery I had was only recommended for women 26 years of age and older. Seeing I was 22, I was left paying out of pocket $8,000 for my cancer surgery. Now I am 27, uninsured, and just battled cancer again. Only now I am over $10,000 in debt so far. I am now cancer-free but financially ruined. We have to take the profit out of health care. 30 percent of the premiums go towards profits and administration. So we're saying let's just get rid of them. Let's do it like Medicare where the government runs it, the overheads a couple percent, and we can save money that way and we can insure more people. The chair of the Finance Committee, Senator Max Bacchus, one of the largest recipients of insurance and drug companies' money within the Democratic Party, put forth a plan which is supposed to guarantee that everyone has coverage. And so we're going to come up with a uniquely American solution, which is also going to be public-private. Um, not, you know, too far one side, not too far the other. When delivering remarks to the press at the Kaiser Family Foundation last week, Senator Max Bacchus reiterated once more that everything is on the table. Everything's on the table. Everything. All proposals, all ideas that groups may have are on the table. And they're going to stay on the table. We're going to discuss them. Um, and if anyone finds something on the table that he or she has a negative reaction to, I say, suspend judgment. <laughs> Hold off <laughs> judgment. Suspend judgment at least for 15 minutes. Try to see if there's a way to get to yes. Think about it. There might be a positive angle here. When confronted by single-payer advocates outside the building, Senator Baucus refrained from answering why single-payer was not on the table. Half an hour later, a journalist at the press conference raised the same question. You say repeatedly that everything is on the table, but the, the supporters of single-payer health care point out that their plan is not on the table. That's true, they do. <laughs> they make that very clear. And, <laughs> and as, as they, uh, so, so what do you say to them as they point out that they have significant support, um, and yet their plan is the one thing that is not on the table at the moment? Well, just to be honest, um, it, it's, it's not on the table. It's the only thing it's not, because it cannot pass. It just cannot pass. I don't know there are two or three members of Congress who privately, you know, honestly will tell you that it can pass. I don't know any member of Congress who could privately, honestly tell you that it can pass. There are currently 77 co-sponsors of John Conyers' House Resolution 676, Single Payer Medicare for All bill. It just can't pass. Uh, not today. And we can't squatter this opportunity. We can't spend um, um, can't waste capital on, on something that's just um, impossible. 
According to the AP Yahoo poll of December 2007, 54 percent considered themselves supporters of a single-payer health care system. On January 28, 2009, the California Nurses Association and the National Nurses Organizing Committee presented the findings of a new study to congressional staffers. It demonstrated that a comprehensive Medicare-based single-payer system would not only provide access to quality care for all U.S. residents, but also create 2.6 million new jobs infuse $317 billion in new business and public revenues, and add another $100 billion in wages to the U.S. economy. Adding all Americans to an expanded Medicare-based system would cost an additional $63 billion. The $63 billion is far less than the federal bailout for Citigroup and less than half the federal bailout for AIG. Russell Mockhyber was one of the eight arrested during the Finance Committee hearing on Tuesday, May 5th, for demanding to include a single-payer representative in on the discussion. He was also one of the 500 health care reform activists at the rally. The only thing that's going to work is uh, save the $400 billion in administrative costs and profits by getting rid of the, by getting rid of the health insurance industry, private health insurance industry, and use that money uh, to ensure everyone and to bring everyone in the same system so every American has uh, a AmeriCare card when they're born and they can go to any doctor, any hospital, no bills, no, no co-pays, no deductibles, no private insurance companies and uh, it will relieve a lot of stress on the system. It will stop this business of more than half of uh, uh, ban bankruptcies being triggered by medical bills and it, no longer will we have uh, 20,000 Americans a year die from lack of health insurance. That just doesn't happen in Canada and Taiwan and Japan. When I started bargaining, when I started as a union representative back in the 80s, my first negotiations, we barely talked about health care. It was just, this, you know, it was just presumed the employer would pay it. As we went on through the 80s, then we were told about the rising cost of health care. And it was blamed on the hospitals. And what we were told was, we've got this new creation called HMOs. These insurance companies, they're going to drive down health care costs. Remember, we all bought into that. And that went on, right? So it was, you know, and then we find out that insurance companies are really the problem. Up until last weekend, when I saw something in the paper that said, don't worry about it now, because the conglomeration of health insurance companies and major hospitals and uh, maybe the AMA, they're all going to get together and voluntarily drive down health insurance costs, right? Does anybody think that that's going to happen? I think everything's going to stay on the table, but big portions will be modified and sculpted. Uh, one example is public option. Um, that's, a, that's a hot button. And um, I, I do sus suspect that a version will be there. Now, I, by, my, by saying that, I don't want to frighten people, with, particularly on the, on the industry side, so, oh, there they go. Boxes has said public options, and you know, it's, the deal's, deal's off. Um, I don't want to, uh, they're, they're, all I'm saying is there are ways to skin a cat. There are ways to find solutions. There are ways, to, I think, to do this, uh, ultimately, in a way that's acceptable. Politicians have to stop taking money from the insurance companies. And right now they're saying it's not politically feasible because they're still taking money from that big industrial medical complex from phar pharmaceuticals and insurance companies. Um, my name's Linda Allison. I work uh, for one of the large corporations here, but I talk to a lot of people about health care. My question is, so many people uh, go bankrupt using their credit cards to pay for health care. Why have they taken single payer off the plate, and why is Senator Bacchus on the Finance Committee discussing health care when he has received so much money from the pharmaceutical companies, isn't it a conflict of interest? Donate today and receive a new documentary film available to members of the Real News Network. The History of the National Security State with legendary author Gore Vidal. Bonus features of the DVD include an in-depth response to Vidal from ex-CIA analyst Ray McGovern, who served under seven U.S. presidents, an exclusive interview with Colin Powell's former Chief of Staff Larry Wilkerson, 
and an insightful interview with oil policy analyst Antonia Juhas. The news magazine of the screen. Living glimpses of history in the making. Hollywood and Washington is a symbiotic relationship. They both deal with illusions. Reality doesn't often uh, play much of a part. I think I saw through the myth of the uh, Cold War almost from the beginning. I was a Washington political kid from a political family. Roosevelt first had radio because he had a, this great speaking voice and everyone liked to hear. Truman proceeded to break every arrangement that Roosevelt had set up for a peaceful coexistence. And Truman thought that it would be a good idea. Why not just stay armed all the time? And then he devised the national security state. You've got to go up and swear allegiance to the United States or else you're a commie. I mean, we, were, we had imported fascism. We get Dwight Eisenhower, who said that we have this great military industrial complex. It is a dangerous thing. And he said, this is going to change everything. And the way our country's governed, it's going to change us politically. Along comes Jack Kennedy, who wanted to make his mark, believed in the Cold War. But he said, in this kind of politics, it is the appearance of things that matters. I think everybody should take a sober look at the world about us. The national security state still exists, only it isn't communism anymore, it's terrorism. This is the most serious thing that has happened in the history of the United States. Knowledge is power. We need an honest news system. We need the real news. This is the sort of thing we can build right now without anyone else's permission from the government or from the business community. It's the powers in our hands. If we're not going to sleepwalk into more wars, we think we need to start with a television news network that won't bow to pressure and has the courage to seek facts. And that means independent economics. And that's why we need you. Make a tax-deductible donation now of at least $10 a month or a one-time give of at least $75. As a thank you for your support, we will send you the new documentary film, The History of the National Security State.